There's some other uh, issues I wish to point out with this example. First of all, we lock numbers, we get in, we get out. That's good. But also notice that produce numbers here, produce numbers is enqueuing, while this thread is um, looking at it, che checking, saying, hey, is the count not zero, dequeuing. You might think that might be safe because, hey, we're, we're adding to the queue here. We're enqueuing. We're just putting more stuff on there. These threads are worried about the beginning of the queue. So as long as these consuming threads coordinate with each other, it, this this producing thread needs not be concerned about what the consuming threads are doing. Well, that is actually a false assumption. If I go to, I'm going to click on Q here and hit F1, bring up the help for it. I haven't done this forever, so you no, know, of course it will not. I'm going to go Google it, bring it up, hold on. Okay, I have here the help for the Q class. Um, and I'm just going to do a search for, uh, let's see, thread. I have thread here and is synchronized. Ooh, we'll get into this a little bit later. I'm going to keep going, looking for more terms thread. Synchronize, returns a Q raptor. Ooh, okay. No spoilers, spoilers. Have the plus sign next to thread safety. You'll see this phrase pretty much on any uh, built-in .NET class type help. In the help document, you'll see this all the time. Public static shared in Visual Basic methods. So public static methods, members of this type are thread safe. Any instance members are not guaranteed to be thread safe. Which, if you ask me, is kind of a cop-out, but it's a good cop-out. Microsoft's taking the approach that, hey, no thread safety here, right? If you get multiple threads running code inside this queue at the same time, no guarantees as to what's going to happen here. Now, there's a reason why static members are pretty much guaranteed to be thread safe. But notice we're not using any static members on our on our uh, our queue. We're we're using uh, oh sorry, I was moving my Visual Studio window there. We're not using any static members. We're using instance members. We're using um, where is it? NQ, that's an instance member, and DQ, those are instance members. So. So, uh, this wording basically applies to us. Um, any instance members are not guaranteed to be thread safe, right? To guarantee thread safety in a, uh, of the queue, all operations must be done through the wrapper returned by a synchronized method. I'll get to that in a future video not too far away. Enumerating through a collection is intrinsically not a thread safe procedure. Even when a collection is synchronized, other threads can still modify the collection, which causes the enumerator to throw an exception. Uh, that's another concept we can talk about in a different video as well. We, anytime any thread accesses the shared queue, this queue that we're, we're adding and removing to, uh, adding to and removing from, uh, we need to lock around it. So technically, to be correct and professional, I need to lock as well. Lock numbers right there because that's where we're doing the NQ. All right. So basically, only one thread can get into the methods or members of Q at any given time, which which is nice. What what happens if you understand your data structures, and even if you don't, but a Q could, it could keep a linked list or an array or you know some sort of internal in, uh, internal structure. I'll say it's a linked list. It probably isn't. It's probably more like an array. But anyway, it could be keeping some some d internal data structure in there. And and then when we NQ, that we're going to change up these r references. You know, maybe they're going to point different places. And there's there's code in there that's going to maintain the state of this queue, keep things consistent. But if we only get halfway through that code while we're NQing an item, then DQ gets in there and starts screwing around, assuming the state of the queue is fine, but really it's not because there's another thread in there trying to add an item while we're trying to pull it out at the same time, um, then we're going to have some thread collision issues. It, I know that it didn't really pop up as an exception here on the screen, but guess what? It If it can happen, it will. Just give it enough time to run. Okay, so anyway, I just want to point out we needed the lock th there as well. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this example. I'm going to cut it and paste it in the, a temporary notepad because because I want to come back to it, but I also want to illustrate something with lock as well. Lock doesn't necessarily mean nobody can get in the object. In fact, if I bring that code back up here, all right, you might think, let me get this lock off right here. You might think, hey, and, and I thought this as a brand new programmer, I was totally naive, but you might think, you know, if these threads get a lock, then just naturally this other thread won't be able to get in here and do its work because these threads have the lock. But that's not 
the, I, I think the .NET designers kind of screwed up here a little bit. Remember, in the previous examples, I said lock baton, and baton was simply a OBJ ECT. There's a reason why I did that. All right, I'm just using numbers as the baton, but really locking numbers doesn't stop other threads from getting in there. Let me let me code up an example that shall prove that. I'm gonna I'm gonna say um, let's make a class. I don't know. I'm using a lot of bathroom examples, so bathroom stall. Okay, and uh, let's do public void uh, be used, I guess. Oh, that's kind of awkward sounding, but whatever, be used. And uh, I'm gonna, just going to say wall true, and I'm going to pass an int in here as well. Int uh, user number wall true uh, thread dot sleep. Let's sleep for half a second. But before we do that, I want to say... Um, being used by plus the user number. Okay, so the bathroom stall, pretty simple. Let's make a static one. We're going to share it amongst many threads. Bathroom stall, stall gets new bathroom stall. And then, uh, let's see, uh, let's see, static void regu regular users. Okay, uh, and what are they going to do? They're going to be appropriate and say lock the stall. Oops. Lock the, lock the, why did that not pop up? Lock the stall, and then stall dot be used. All right, and actually I don't want a wall true. Let's do a, let's do a for loop and loop just a few times. Let's for, control L, 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 I, I less than, let's do five here. Okay, so, well, we're, we'll be, we're gonna use it for a while and then be done. Be used, we also have to pass a thread ID, so let's do, object actually we can just say let's use manage thread id thread dot current thread dot manage thread id all right so regular users the regular users do this okay they go in there and they wait until they can get the lock on the stall and then they go use it for a little while and then they let go all right that's that's appropriate that's what we're used to okay but then of course there's always one in a crowd static void the weird guy all right you know, the inappropriate guy, and he's not going to lock. He's just going to say, hey, stall dot be used, thread dot current thread dot manage thread ID. He's not going to attempt to get the lock. All right, he's just going to, he's just going to go directly in there. All right, now you may think, hey, if somebody's already in there, then they already have the lock, then this guy, yeah, he's a little weird, but he still won't be able to use the stall because this uh, thread over here has the lock. Well, Let's just see what happens. Four in I. Uh, let's do three regular users. Okay, and I'm going to say new thread regular users dot start. Okay, and then um, and actually just to just to prove that this guy's weird, I'm gonna, instead of saying manage thread ID, I'm going to call him 99. Uh, let's do that, and then um, let's say new thread the weird guy. Or awkward guy, maybe, whatever you want. Dot start. Okay, so three normal people. Take your time. When you're done, I'll go in there. And then this weird guy's just like, you know, just come on in. All right, control F5, run it. Okay. Woo! <laughs> See what happened? <laughs> See, three and four and five, they all cooperated. But the weird guy, no, he wasn't stopped. All right, he wasn't stopped. He went directly in there. He just said, "Oh, three, you're in there. I'm coming in too." You know, that must have been interesting. Whatever happened in there, I don't know. But, but three, three was in there. He was doing his thing appropriately. But then 99, the weird guy, just was able to go on in. So all threads need to cooperate by using the lock. Lock doesn't necessarily mean lock that object up. It looks like it, doesn't it? When I say lock, it it looks like it's it's saying, "Hey, lock that object up. Don't let any other threads into it." But that's not really what's going on. It's just saying, "Hey, I want the baton." All right, give me the key. I'll go in there. But guess what? The lock, the door, on the the door doesn't really lock. It's just everybody. Eh, like sometimes when you go, I remember on camping trips, on like scout camping trips, you'll go to, and you'll see the the outhouse, and they have the green and red, and basically you have to go off the green or the red. Yeah, the door could lock, but sometimes the lock doesn't work quite right. And you can, if you push on it hard enough, you could have an awkward moment with whoever's in there. So I usually just go off the coloring on the door. If, if the door is red, then great. I won't go in, and if it's green, then I'll go in. Um, and so that's really all this what this lock's doing. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more more about the implementation details, what's really happening inside of .NET with these in a future video. But 
But um, for now, lock really just means, hey, are you going to respect my privacy or not? It doesn't necessarily, s it, with, without the lock, people can go right on in like they did here with the weird guy. I just want to run that again. That's just so awkward what happened there. Let's uh, put the lock back on there. Notice the weird guy, okay, he can't get in there. No, three gets in there, does his business. Four gets in there, does his business. Five as well. And then the weird guy is able to come in. And he's not weird anymore. He's actually using the stall appropriately.